Hello everyone, it's Anna and Sarah again, our second video on our short series on biblical lament. So in our first video, we, it was an invitation to build biblical lament and we were talking about lament in general, just what is it, um, what's it, what's its use and, and what should we know about it. In the second video, we wanted to get a bit more practical and we're specifically looking at Lamentations chapter one. Um, and there are at least two different uh, genres or two different ways of looking at the format of what's actually written there that we thought would be interesting to mention and then to say, you know, what, what does that tell us? Like, what does that format tell us about um, the content? So um, the first one, neither of these are, we can't credit, give, take the credit for either one of these. Both of these have been pointed out by other people. So the, the first is Old Testament scholar, Dr. Kathleen uh, O'Connor, who's um, an expert and writes on Jeremiah and Lamentations. And she points out that Lamentations 1 is structured in the form of a funeral dirge or a funeral song. And she talks about four elements that you'll find. So I'll name these elements and then I'll leave it to you to look through and find examples uh, of these four things. But I'll give you a few along the way. So First of all, there's the mournful cry or just the emotional outburst um, right at the beginning. You see uh, this word, alas, or um, it's translated in my ESV version here, how lonely sits the city or how tragic. So in a mournful cry. Um, and then there's also a proclamation of death. It's just uh, a statement of what has happened, a statement of reality. So you might find this in verse three, for example, where it says Judah has gone into exile. Or even verse six, from the daughter of Zion, all majesty has departed. Then number three is a contrast with previous circumstances. You know, things used to be like this, and now they're like this. Um, even in verse one, you see this. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. And then finally, uh, the reaction of the people observing the situation, the reaction of the bystanders. In the case of the people of Israel, part of the, their lament is that the people who are our enemies are gloating about this. People are laughing. Um, people are saying, we had this coming. So the mournful cry, proclamation of death, contrast with the previous circumstances, and then the reaction of the, of the bystanders. Um, but Sarah, there's another, there's another thing that has to do with the format of how these are structured that you were going to mention. Yeah, I did just want to say too, real quickly, when we, when we went through it in our Bible study, um, it was really fascinating because um, we, we went through it in terms of the coronavirus and actually it, it seemed like I related more to the bystander than I probably would have realized um, in if I hadn't gone through that process. So I just found that really fascinating. Um, but the other format that we see in Lamentations um, is pointed out by um, the author of the book, um, Prophetic Lament, which I think we had mentioned before. But um, Sung Cheng Ra writes of how the book of Lamentations is written in the form of a, an acrostic poem, which means um, in each chapter, each verse begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and descends in alphabetical order. So loosely in English, it would be chapter one, verse one starts with the letter A, chapter one, verse two starts with the letter B, um, and so on um, until the end of the alphabet. And I found it so fascinating um, that the scripture itself was structured that way um, because the alphabet really symbolized not only the totality of uh, one's grief or suffering, um, from A to Z, a complete, um, a, a complete expression of that. Um, but it also offered a boundary that allows an honest and thorough expression of pain, um, but also kind of brings a sense of order to um, white, what might otherwise be a very chaotic situation. And it provides um, an ending point to a season that might otherwise go on indefinitely. Um, so I did just want to read one quote from Su Chang Ra's book, and that quote is, the acrostic reminds the lamenter that God orders the universe. 
In the midst of chaos and beyond the Im immediacy of suffering, God demonstrates control. Even as the fullness of suffering is unleashed and the complete story is revealed, God remains faithful. And I just felt like it was so important to, to really realize that even in the midst of extreme pain and suffering, we can know and be assured that God is so faithful. Um, yeah. And the situation is not in any way out of his control. Yeah, so the form is here. Um, I, think it, I think for us, it could be really useful to help us learn to do something that does not come naturally to us. I mean, as Sarah said, we did go through this as a group and we're trying, we did a corporate lament together um, about coronavirus. So you could do that um, with a friend or a few people if you are able. Um, I think in the last video, we also said, is there an issue that God's bringing up to you saying that um, this is something you need to deal with? You can't be in denial, but you need to bring this um, and express this to God. So if there is something like that, I really invite you to, in some time alone with God, maybe you write this down, maybe you write this out, or maybe this is just something you speak aloud to God. Um, I, in, I invite you to put into practice these tools because however awkward it feels, um, this is something that we, we need to get better at. And just a final thing, I'd like to invite you to read at least Lamentations 1. I mean, just start, but read it out loud because I know I was surprised as I read it aloud. Um, I almost felt a little embarrassed, like, wow, this is really going on a long time. Um, even though it's only, as Sarah said, it's only 22 verses because it's just doing one for each Hebrew letter. So, um, but reading it aloud will show you the kind of language that, um, that believers um, have used to, in, in expressing their honesty to God. And I think it will just give you a framework or an idea of the kind of range that you're invited to use with the Father who loves us so much. So we'll see you in our next video, hopefully. And thank you for being part of the series. Bye-bye. Two different formats that Lamentations 1, that are found in Lamentations 1. <laughs> Hold on. We can't really stop and re-record, so we'll just trust the editing. We'll cut this out and we'll start it again, right? Okay. Thank you, Ian. Here we go.